Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So my friends over at Yarnspirations.com and today we have the Interlocking Shells Blanket. Now what I did is that I had a pattern that kept getting requested and it was a pattern from Yarnspirations.com that we taught and it was from the middle and it was using this shell concept and starting off with, as a square and I've seen several comments about wanting people wanting to do it as a rectangle. So I decided during a big snowstorm to put my hook in the wind and figure it out on how to do it as a rectangle. So it took me quite some time to do it but what I decided to do is that I came up with the one that was in here within blue. But I realized being a host on YouTube is that when I do one size people are saying I wish you would have done the twin size or I wish you would have done a wheelchair size or a baby blanket. So what I decided to do is I spent a whole day trying to figure out all the mathematics and doing a sample. So here is the twin size and here are the other sizes. So the size that's going to be listed in the pattern is the, si is the size that's suggested in the video title. So the introductions for all four of these will be exactly the same. So let me tell you what the differences are. So the small size is going to cover baby blankets, child size blankets, teenager blankets, even queen size with draping on the sides of the mattress and king size for both the mattress and the drape. For the medium that we have here this is for wheelchairs, baby blankets, a child size blankets and teenager blankets. So it has that nice uh, item that you have. So the spine is longer so that it will grow more in a rectangular format. For the large size, great for child size and teenager size blankets. And then what we have here for this one here, this one is the twin size uh, for that. You can use it for cribs if you want to do that, cradles, uh, queen size with no drape as well. So just make sure that if you ever do it for a crib or a cradle you're just uh, conscious of what you can put in that. So just exercise your caution and some people suggest not to put blankets and those kind of things. So I'm going to leave that to your discretion. I do have it figured out just in case that's something that you're interested in. So without further ado I used Karen uh, Jumbo or sorry Karen one pound yarn. For tutorial reasons I'm going to have some fun here with the Karen Jumbo yarn. This is called Lake Mist. It's very much like Red Heart Super Saver Ombre where it changes color on its own and so when you see the colors changing we're going to go. So let's go on to the size that's suggested in the video title and let's show you how to get started because once you get the spines done then you can get everything done and it will grow out evenly even if you change the hook or the yarn. So here's an example. So this is the very first one I did just to test it and so this is the medium size that you saw within the blue sample. And so it got bigger and bigger and I went and I just had some fun with the color play with the Karen one pound yarn and I thought it turned out really good. The trick with this is that we need to get the spine figured out and the shells in place and then once you get that done it's just a matter of repeating two rows or two rounds over and over and over. So the different size of the spines is obviously shorter for the small, a little bit longer for the large and then there's a significant portion then for the twin size. Let's begin the size that we're promising today. So let's move on and I'm going to do the medium size and the difference between the small size and the medium large and extra large is that the distance between the middle of these shells is not the same. So only on the ends that you have that four, that chain four space when they're separating from each other they're only chain three in the middle. So when you look at this one up here there's chain three, chain three uh, in the middles between them. So that's something that you have to factor in when you're thinking about this. So I'm going to start and let's get started with the medium size and let's begin. So let's begin the medium size. A chance there this color will change on its own. I'm still using that same yarn I promised and I did the first sample pretty much and I never changed color so it'll change color probably in this one. So we're going to chain 23 for the medium size. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 and 23. So it's exactly one multiple bigger than the small size and we're going to begin this next. Let's start round number one. So round number one what we're going to do is we'll have two ends and then we're going to have two pieces in the middle. The small size was only one. So we're going to go fifth chain from the hook. So one, two, three, four in the fifth one and turn the chain over. Get the back hump of the chain and I need you to, to double crochet that spot. 
then chain one and double crochet it again. That's considered a V-stitch. We're gonna be talking a lot about V-stitches today. So now we're going to move down the chain and I need you to skip the next four that you can see there and go to the fifth one and start what I'm about to show you. So you're going to, uh, before you do that, you'll chain one and then skip the four and go to the fifth and double crochet. I then need you to double crochet the very next one which will be a V-stitch. So it'll be a double crochet, the color just changed, chain one and double crochet. Then the next chain is going to be a double crochet by itself. You're then going to chain one and we need to create another one of these. So you're only gonna skip three this time and go to the fourth one away and do the exact same thing. So you're gonna double crochet first. The next one will be a V-stitch. And then the one right after it, it's going to be a double crochet. So it always looks the same. Now because you're working and hitting the edge soon, you're gonna chain one and you're going to skip the next four and go to the fifth one away and then you're going to begin a full turn for the corner. So you're gonna start off with one V-stitch first. And just let the project naturally turn around in your hand. So chain one and in the same stitch again, place another V-stitch. This is a short edge side that you're putting in right now. You'll chain one and then you're gonna V-stitch one more time. So once the V-stitch is in, you're just going to chain one and the nice thing about it is once this is upside down, you're going to use the same chain work but you can see exactly where you need to stick your hook. So you're still st uh, skipping the same number of stitches but what I want you to pay attention to to make your life easier. See this where this is? That's the double crochet that's sitting by itself. So just put in a double crochet there and then your V-stitch is gonna go in the next one and you can see it already has one on the underside, right? So V-stitch. And then remember you still have another double crochet that's by itself. So you wanna make that by itself. Now to get over to here, you're going to chain one and just look to where these are and immediately just place in your stitch work. So a double crochet. The next one is a V-stitch because you can see it and because I'm telling you to. <laughs> it's not rocket science, right? Thank God for that. This job is, would be hard, like it'd be impossible if it was rocket science. So I'm not that smart. So we have a V-stitch and then a double crochet. Sorry, I digress. So chain one and now you're gonna come to where you started. This is already partially done. So you're gonna just come right over here and you're going to start with the V-stitch. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then you're going to chain one and this next V-stitch is already partially done. It's right here. So you're just gonna put in a double crochet, chain one and you're going to go to the third chain of the first chain four and then that will make that V-stitch finished. Just like that. So now you have the back spine done and now we're going to begin uh, round number two. In round number two, it's a fun little round and I'm gonna probably get you to do some repeating. Uh, I haven't decided yet but we'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll put the timers on. And what I have here is right where we're sitting, I need you to go into this next space before this V-stitch. So I want you to identify where the V-stitches are because it makes your life a lot easier. And so right where I'm sitting, I'm going to come into the space and slip stitch over, chain one and single crochet and that's the space before this V-stitch. These V-stitches are all gonna get the same thing all the way around. So in this space, you're gonna put in seven double crochet. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. Now before you can get the next V-stitch shell here, you have to put in your single crochet right here to hold that into its position. 
So remember that the spaces be between the V stitches have to have these single crochets in. So right here is another shell. So let's do another seven double crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Then in the space right here, single crochet in and then keep on doing that. So another seven here. Then this big space that you see, you're gonna single crochet in and then you're gonna circle around the edge. So each one of these V stitches are all gonna have your seven double crochets in and the spaces in between those V stitches will have your single crochet. So let me do that quietly in my head. So just place in your seven double crochets in between the V stitch, in the V stitch itself. Once that's in, single crochet in between that space there and then the next V stitch is another seven double crochet. Then look for the space before the next V stitch and then another seven goes in here. So your ends kind of when you have this shell work right at the very beginning here looks reminds me of a of a three leaf clover. Okay so the this side is exactly what you just did on the other side and you can see where the stitch work is to help you know where it's gonna go. So you need to put in a single crochet to hold that position and then you'll do your V or you'll do your shell work, single crochet, shell work, single crochet, and then you have your shell work, single, shell work and then I'm gonna meet you at the end of this round. So just to follow exactly how you're going to do it and I'll be back in a moment and I'll conclude this round with you on camera. So I'm just spinning around the other side and I'm doing my very last shell before I'm done this round. This is round number two. So this pattern is very easy to do. Um, round number th uh, three and four is the repeat and it just keeps getting bigger and it just is very easy to follow once you get this established. So one, two, three, four, five, six and I'm getting my seven in and once my seven are in I'm going to slip stitch to the first single crochet that I started with and that will conclude it and when I lay it down it really does kind of remind me of a clover. So that's now been established and when we look at the original one that we started with uh, the small size in the other video you will notice that one of the middles are missing. So it's much more narrow like that but this case we have a bigger spine to work with therefore it'll grow more of a rectangular shape as well more, more longer than the original. Let's begin row number three. In row number three we're going to get ourselves established in this particular spot. This is always gonna be the corner when you look at it from this position and when you look at other versions this corner just keeps getting further apart from each other. Do you see that? So we just gotta keep an eye on that in the future. So right now wh where we are we need to chain four. So one, two, three, four and in the same one as the join I need you to place in another double crochet. This equals a V stitch. We're now going to officially turn a corner so we have to chain three which causes the turn and in the same spot of the join you wanna do another V stitch. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So we only wanna play within the single crochets in this round. So in order to get to this one we have to chain five. So one, two, three, four, five and come right to this single crochet and do another V stitch. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And you're gonna do that all the way until you get to the next corner which will be right here. Okay so you're just gonna chain five 
and then v-stitch, chain five, v-stitch, chain five and I'll see you in the corner in just a moment. So when you have a corner which is right here it's going to be the same thing in each corner. It's gonna be a double crochet which and chain one and double crochet so it's a v-stitch then chain three to actually turn and in the same spot you are going to v-stitch again. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So that's what your corner should look like. Now you need to get to here right? So in order to do that you have to chain five. So one, two, three, four, five and then in that spot it's another corner. So it's a v-stitch and then chain three to actually turn. One, two, three and then v-stitch again into the same spot to turn. And then you start jumping across again. So chain five, v-stitch, chain five, v-stitch and etc. And you can turn the corner because you already know how to do it and I will see you back here at the beginning in just a moment. So I've just turned the next corner. You can see that the yarn color changed on its own too. So one, two, three, four, five and you are going to attach yourself to the third chain of the first chain four to do that. So right now we're ready for round number four and you will see that it looks more square now that you've done this last round but the next round is going to put the shells into each one of these v-stitches that you created. Let's try that next number four. In round number four you just want to move yourself to this space right here. It's the middle of the v-stitch and slip stitch over and then that's where you're gonna begin. So chain a total of uh, three so one, two, three and put six more double crochets in there. So that chain three plus the six equals seven. Once you have your chain three plus the six that gives you seven. So this chain three spot is the corner. So you're just going to single crochet into that spot and then the next v-stitch is another seven double crochet. And now here's where the game plan changes. So once that seven's in you want to single crochet to the fourth one of this shell here. But when you go in you need to go there and see this chain five. Place it on top of the stitch so when you single crochet it traps it inside that single crochet stitch. So it's now inside the stitch. You will reach over to the next v-stitch and place in another seven double crochet. And once that seven's in you'll reach over it. You need the next single crochet to hold it, it which is the middle one of this shell down here. So going in place the chain on top of that and single crochet so it gets stuck inside that stitch. So what I need you to do is that I need you to go across and we'll just cover it on how to turn a corner one more time and then just do that. So you'll shell and single crochet trapping it, shell and single crochet trapping it and then I'll see you in the corner in a moment. So let's cover uh, doing a corner. So here's your corner. So you're gonna just put your seven in first. And once your seven are in you'll single crochet to the chain three to hold it and then this v-stitch will have another seven so that you can officially turn. Once that seven's in you have the same situation of this chain five as in limbo. So come to the middle one and single crochet and trap that chain underneath that stitch. And then you have another corner. So do the corner the exact same way and it's actually really quite easy to do and just come around and I'll see you at the end of this round in just a moment. 
So I'm coming back around and I'm gonna give you some advice that I would highly recommend and of course <laughs> why would I tell you? <laughs> Don't wanna be making sense today. So I'm just putting my seven in and then I'm just gotta put my single crochet to hold that down and then you're going to just slip stitch to the first chain three. Here's my advice. When you start the next round you're going to start at like round number three and you need to start with building these V stitches all over. So your new corner is here but you're sitting here. The problem is is if you slip stitch there this shell will always look out of place throughout the whole blanket. So what I'm going to recommend to you is that just cut this yarn and when you restart the next round what you'll wanna do is just take a tapestry needle and hide in the back end. So let me just show you that quick. So take a tapestry needle. I'd recommend that you probably do it as you go. It's just why not right? Not everybody likes weaving in tails in mass at the end. So if you just go in the back side, just dragging it through and go back and forth a total of three times. Catch it into those fibers. A long time ago I used to use a uh, crochet hook to weave in the ends and it always falls out. This is better. So when you go to start the next one you wanna start it here. So th if you look at it this is your corner. Okay this is your corner. So you'll start like you did number three. Start with some fresh yarn. Leave enough of a tail so that you can use a tapestry needle to hide that in and then you'll start here and then you'll chain your four and then uh, double crochet back in. That's your first V stitch. You'll then chain your three and then a V stitch and then you're just gonna follow this in sequence and just keep getting bigger and bigger and because your spine is a certain size it's gonna grow in a way that it will match exactly what you're, you're hoping it would. So this is how you would do this particular concept. It's just nice and easy and you can put your hook into the wind and really enjoy your stitching journey. For me I'm going to move on to the next size in the next video and have yourself a great day.